This is the 14 inch Mac, oh, sorry about it. Um, This is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now, these are the exact specs if you're wondering uh, the exact model I have. This is basically the base model and if you've seen the full experience video I made not too long ago or if you just know about the new MacBooks at all, then you know I'm not exaggerating at all when I say that this is an exceptional device. But it's not just the great things that are great about it though, it's also the simple things. Some of the things that you don't see on the spec sheet. I'll call some of these things truly exceptional. Like number one for example, I'm talking the trackpad. Now yes, everyone and their mothers already know that the MacBook's trackpads are the best in the world. But why is that exactly? Is it because they're so accurate and track so good? Well yes, but no. You know, many Windows laptop trackpads are also pretty good at tracking. Is it the one piece design, the way it clicks without clicking? Well no, not again. Some Windows laptops actually do this as well. Is it because of just how big it actually is? I mean it's true that not many laptops have as big as trackpads as MacBooks, but I don't think that's what makes it so great, you know? What I think makes the trackpad so great is everything together. The clicking, the tracking, the bigness, the consistency, and even the extra stuff. The fact that you can click and then click a little deeper for extra options. And just the fact that it's so consistent with gestures and just everything. All of these things come together to form something simple. A trackpad, yes. But because of all these things, it's the best and most trustworthy trackpad in the world. See, I switched to the Microsoft Surface Studio for testing not too long ago, and I'll say that has the best Windows trackpad in the world. And it also has a one-piece design with a uniform vibration click thingy. When I started using it, I realized that even though it's very, very good, it's still a good distance away from the MacBook's trackpad. Just when it comes to the absolute accuracy and tracking and just the clicking, especially the clicking actually, and all of that. Just the extra stuff that the MacBook's trackpad does. So since the Surface Laptop Studio's trackpad is great, then the MacBook's has to be exceptional, at least, right? Um, anyways, the next exceptional thing about the MacBook is not far actually, it's right here. Number two. No, not the keyboard. Um, I mean, the keyboard's cool, feels pretty good, sounds pretty good, it goes clickety clackety, um, but it doesn't feel as cool as Lenovo keyboards with the travel and everything. Those keyboards feel great, but the MacBook's keyboard just feel pretty good. Not really great per se. So I definitely wouldn't go as far as exceptional. So yeah, the keyboard is not what I'm talking about for this video. It's pretty good, but I'm talking about exceptional stuff here. Not just pretty good stuff, okay? That would be clickbait, come on guys. What I'm actually talking about, and the second exceptional thing about the new MacBook Pros is or are the speakers. The MacBook has the best speakers in the world. Now the 16 inch version does get a little louder, but even this 14 inch version right here gets very loud. Much louder than how things sound with your phone. Even if your phone is one of the loudest phones in the world. In fact, the speakers on the MacBook get almost as loud as Bluetooth speakers. Okay, maybe it's not as loud as Bluetooth speakers, um, but the speakers are just so good that whether you use this as a content creating or a content consuming device, it's gonna feel like you almost have your own personal surround system with you. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but really though, this is one of the few laptops out there that sounds so loud and so rich that I really don't need to use earbuds to hear everything I need to properly. Good speakers are very underrated in the tech world, I feel like. And for a laptop, the speakers on the new MacBooks are incredible. Now, the third thing that's incredible or exceptional about the new MacBooks is something no one needs to tell you, but I'm going to. Number three is power and performance. Now this one, you definitely know for sure. You know, if any of you don't know anything about the new MacBooks, you probably know that anything with the M1 Pro, M1 Max chip is pretty powerful, right? And of course, that's true. Even the base model right here can easily chop through 4K footage on Premiere Pro with no problems. I made a whole video about this. But like I said, you don't need me to tell you how powerful this device is at this point, okay? But you should know that in reality, the MacBook doesn't really feel so powerful. Not at all, actually. In reality, the exceptional thing about the new MacBooks is that it just makes really crazy and difficult stuff, intense stuff, seem so easy that you don't even think about it anymore. For example, my regular workflow involves me editing on Premiere Pro, um, 4K videos that is, like I said before. And while I'm doing this, I just have my music playing, you know, set the mood. And then I have the anime I'm currently watching, just pause in another window in the background, just in case I get bored or whatever. And this is just how I work with the MacBook. I don't worry about where I'm at, whether I'm on a table or anything, whether the ventilation is cool. I don't even think about any of that stuff. I just come and I'm doing all this stuff on my bed. 
Now, when I switched to a similar spec Windows laptop not too long ago, the Surface Laptop Studio actually, like I said before, it had uh, 60 gigabytes of RAM, just like the MacBook I have. And while I had it, I didn't even think about it. I just started using it the way I use the MacBook, with Chrome open, with multiple tabs and stuff while editing on Premiere Pro, and the laptop just couldn't handle it. It was getting really hot, the fans were going crazy from the get-go, and performance even started to drop, and it started throttling after a while. And that's when I realized, I remembered that, this thing I do with the MacBook isn't a normal thing. The normal thing to do actually even with powerful laptops is to have other apps closed when you're using an intense app like premiere pro and to use it like on a table or somewhere where the vents will be covered by blankets you know but with the new m1 macbooks they just do this kind of stuff with ease without really getting warm without turning on the fans and without dropping performance it actually truly is unusually good aka exceptional now, before we go on to number four, um, there's something I want to show you. It's a pretty useful device, and it's been a great tool to take maximum advantage of and just harness the MacBook Pro's power. What am I talking about? No, it's not an external GPU. Um, I'm talking about this little gift my pals over at Gizmo sent me. This dongle right here, alongside my MacBook Pro, has made me change my whole workflow from this work monitor setup right here to just this. Now, if you're wondering what happened to my work monitor, um, well, it's my room now, and it's actually a play monitor now. Um, anyways though, the reason this MacBook plus dongle setup can replace my whole all-in-one PC is because this isn't a regular dongle as you can see. This guy has everything. It has so many USB ports, USB-C and USB-A. It has two HDMI ports that you can use simultaneously. It has an Ethernet port as well. And just basically, you're not going to be lacking in ports when you use this guy. And you can use everything you want to at once. You can use one HDMI port to connect to a display. You can use the other one to connect to another display while you're editing a video with a powerful MacBook, while you're connected to one microphone with a USB-A port, and then another my hard drive or something with a USB-A port as well, and then a better hard drive with a USB-C port connected to three ports at the same time, three hard drives at the same time. You know, you can do many things with just this one tiny device. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it's not a tiny of a dongle, actually. Um, but with the kind of power and connectivity this gives you, this really is a pretty small device considering, you know? And it's just great that you can have so many ports connected to it. All plugged into the powerful MacBook Pro. Now, if you're interested in getting this gizmo dongle, um, I have a link in the description below with a 20% discount just for you. Now, you don't have to pay for it though, um, not necessarily, because gizmo would actually like to give away a couple of these guys for free. This is a part of their campaign for Mother's Day. And to end this giveaway, all you have to do is comment below what you'd say to your mom for Mother's Day. You can say anything you want, it just has to be Mother's Day related, okay? So you have to address it to your own mom or someone else's mom. It has to be Mother's Day related. You can say anything you want, you can say a joke. Um, of course, you know, it has to be the right kind of joke. You don't want to be too um, distasteful for Mother's Day and all of that, because then I don't know if you're going to win anything. But you can say anything you want, just make sure it's about Mother's Day. And you leave the comment down below. And you do this and then the folks over at Gizmo are going to go through the comments. And on May 9th, they're going to pick three people to get a chance to win a free product docking station or iPad Pro USB-C hub. So go ahead, leave a comment so you can have a chance to win something, okay? And you can even win it and give it to your mom even, you know? And you know she's not gonna be able to use it or care for it. So she can give it back to you and then you can use it with your clean conscience and everything. Anyway, just leave a comment and um, you can have a chance to win. And thank you again, Gizmo, for sponsoring this video, sort of. All right, now back to our regularly scheduled program. The next and fourth exceptional but simple thing on the MacBook Pros is or are what you're listening to right now actually. See, up until this point in the video, um, every sound you've heard is either come from this microphone right here or this microphone right here, which is my actual YouTube microphone. But that all changed as of a couple seconds ago. Right now, all the sound you're hearing is coming from the fourth exceptional thing about the MacBook Pros, AKA the microphones. Now, Apple has been claiming and sort of bragging that they've had studio microphones in their MacBooks for a while now. So why don't you just help me test that theory right now, actually. This is how I sound with the MacBook's microphones. Testing, testing, testing. And this is how I sound with my actual YouTube studio microphone. Now, I've done the same exact thing to audio from both devices, so just noise reduction and compression only, okay? Yes, and you can hear how things sound for yourself, so you're basically a judge in this area as well. So let me know in the comment section what you think about the audio between these two devices, okay? But doesn't the MacBook sound great though? Like, do they sound so different in quality? Testing the microphone, testing the microphone. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing the microphone. Testing the microphone, testing the microphone. Let me know in the comment section below. If you're watching a video and this is how the audio sounded, would you think anything of it? Would you think it's not that professional or anything? Or does it sound exceptional to you?
Let me know, okay? Now, that's about it for the MacBook's microphones. So let's move on to the fifth and final exceptional thing about the MacBook for this video. The thing that can let you spend all day using this laptop nonstop with no hassles or interruptions. What I'm talking about, of course, at number five is battery life. Now at this point, I know that you know that I know that you've known for a while about the great battery life that you can get with the MacBook Pro, but something I've been doing a lot recently is editing on the go. And I remember one of these days, I was using it for like six hours straight on Premiere Pro, outside in the hot sun, all the way till sundown. And I don't even think the MacBook even got hot. Maybe not even warm like that. Yeah, it's not hot at all. Oh wow. And it's still on? Like is the battery about to die or anything? Nope, it's on 45%. Whoa. Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe, um, but the word I'll use is exceptional. Um, anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. And that's about it for the simple and exceptional things about the MacBook Pro. Now, you might disagree with my list, or you might even think I'm a fanboy for ever making this video. Um, I've gotten a lot more of that lately. Or you might think that it's something that should be in this video, but actually isn't. Like the display, for instance. The MacBook does have a great display. But my reasoning for not including stuff like that is that if I switch from the MacBook display, so let's say the XPS display, for instance, well, I just don't think that I and most people would be disappointed with the XPS's display. I mean, it's a 4K display, it's a high resolution, it has very accurate colors, very punchy colors as well. And even though you might miss the MacBook's display, maybe, you're not gonna miss it so much, just cause the XPS display is pretty great too. But I feel like if you get used to the MacBook's trackpad or the speakers or just the battery life and the way it performs, and then you switch to another device that's just pretty good in that area, well, that device is gonna feel a good amount worse than the MacBook and you're going to definitely miss it then. So yeah, guys, that's about it for this video. Give me your hot takes in the comment section below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time, okay? Bye-bye.